this video, we will install Isabel 5 using VirtualBox as a testing environment. First, we'll download Isabel from the official website. Then in VirtualBox, we create a new machine and give it a reference name. From the ISO image field, we select the ISO we just downloaded. The system automatically sets the operating system to Linux and the version to Red Hat. We will change that. We activate the option, skip unattended installation, so we can modify the required Linux version. The version we need to set is other Linux 64-bit. Now, let's move to the hardware section and add the amount of RAM our test machine will have. We need to consider that this allocation reduces the resources of the host machine, so 2 or 4 gigabytes is sufficient for this test. In the hard disk section, we'll set the size of our server's disk. Like with the RAM, this space will be taken from the host machine, 12 gigabytes is acceptable for this test. Then we click on finish, and our test machine is ready. Before starting the installation, let's configure the network interface. We click on settings and then on network. We select the option bridged adapter and then the interface we will use. If our host machine has only one interface, that's the correct one. Now our test machine is ready. We click on start to install Isabel. After a few seconds, a screen will appear with two options. We press enter on the option, test this media and install. The process will perform a test of our server and if everything is okay, it will start the graphical installer. The first option presented by the installation is the language. Once we have chosen the language, we click on the continue button. Later, we can make a change if necessary. We enter a summary screen of the installation where the following parameters are configured. Regionalization, software, system, and user settings. Let's start by configuring the regionalization parameters. Click on keyboard. Select the keyboard you will use for this virtual instance and then click done. Now we will check the installation destination. By default, the server disk on which we are installing Isabel is selected, but we can review the storage settings and customize them to ensure that the root has all the necessary memory. Select the Customized option and then click on Done. This will take us to the disk partition configuration. With the standard partition option selected, click to create it automatically. The process will automatically assign spaces to the boot partition, the virtual memory or swap partition, and the root partition where all the files are. This is important because remember that recordings are saved in the root. Click Done and accept the changes. Now we check the software selection option. Here we define the version of asterisk that Isabel will use in addition to enabling additional software. If we leave Isabel network checked, when we enter the graphical interface, we will see that this and other modules are installed. Click Done. In Network and Host Name, we can review the network configuration. If we did the correct network configuration before starting the installation and this interface has internet access, we will obtain a network configuration via DHCP. It is understood that the network environment where we are working also delivers addresses to the devices that request them. At this point, we can make changes to the network configuration if necessary. The default hostname is isabel.local, we can change it by entering the desired name and then clicking apply. Once we are ready, click done. Now we will review the date and time settings. Upon entering, we will see that the network time option is enabled and our location, time, 
and date have been set automatically. This happens because we have an active NTP server. If we want to make a manual change, we can disable this option. Once we have set the time and date, we click on Done. As a final step before installing, we will create the root user's password. It is recommended that the password be easy to remember for the administrator, but complex for any potential intruder. The system will indicate whether the password is strong or weak. A best practice is to have an administrator user who is not the root user, so that we have another recovery point in the system. We are ready for Isabel to start its installation. We click on the Begin Installation button. This process can take between 20 and 30 minutes. When the installation completes, the system will automatically reboot. The system will prompt for the root password of MariaDB, the database for Isabel. Set a password and press Enter. Then confirm the password. Next, the system asks for the password of the admin user for the Isabel graphical interface. Set a password and press Enter. In this case, you must also confirm the password. The next step is to select the language of the web interface. This can be changed later from the interface. Then, the system asks which driver managing ZIP will use port 5060. If we choose PJZIP, then Chon ZIP will use 5066. Finally, consider contributing to the development of Isabel, you can do so on Patreon. After completing these initial steps, we will access the Isabel console. Log in with the root user and the password defined before the installation. Upon entering, we will see the IP assigned to our Isabel, we copy it and go to a browser. Here, we log in with the admin user and the password set when the installation process was completed. Upon entering the interface, Isabel suggests registering the instance, which we can do by clicking on Sign Up. Enter the data and create an account. If we already have an account, we can use it to associate the instance with that account. Now you are ready to use Isabel. Check out our available courses at isabel.com and get certified. Thank you.